Yeah, little little Easter egg just for just for the fun. And I think a lot of what we do on this podcast is just for fun. We do things because hey, that would be cool. Hey everybody, it's John Lamerton here alongside my good friend and business partner, Mr. Jason Brockman. We are here for another episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast, where as always, it is our job to help you get more customers and make more money without just working harder. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this month's episode. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 100 of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast. Uh, I never, ever for a million years thought we'd get to this stage. Um, Jace, do you remember that conversation we had? Probably, what, six and a bit years ago? Mm, episode eight. <laughs> Last one. We're never going to do this again. Nobody's watching it. No <laughs> point having it. That's the end of it. Let's give it up. It's a bad job. Uh, we're doing it weekly, and, and, it's, and we're going to run out of things to say. Well, I was thinking the, the conversation before that where we said, hey, let's start a podcast. But yeah, I think it was about episode eight. We went, this is just too much like hard work. Um, we have, yeah, we started off and it was this great idea. Hey, let's do a podcast. Um, this would have been the winter of 2016. It's a great idea. I love listening to podcasts. Let's do it. How hard can it be? And yeah, by episode eight, we found out very hard indeed. Um, it probably took me two hours a week to plan each episode, another hour to record, and another hour to edit and promote. So we said, right, let's make it really, really easy. So we went to a nice monthly format. Um, I think for a good year or so, Jace, we we just chatted about what's been happening this month, wasn't it? It was literally what, oh, I've been to the Devon County show. Let's rant about the idiotic stall holders there who don't have a clue how to market their business early listeners to the podcast will go actually more like oh they went to Argyle this week here we go for another rant about the green army and uh, the hospitality that really was in hosp- in hospitality <laughs> i think you'll find that was more more to the point it was i think we had a lot of um we had a lot of basil basil faulty references there didn't we we absolutely did <laughs> we did um speaking of kind of early early um days we used to record kind of live didn't we we did it on facebook live we went live into a group we're actually recording this live today in front of an audience for the first time in probably six years sorry jason i'll not tell you that i thought they oh <laughs> amazing oh dear so yeah we we are we are being watched whilst just to put more pressure on ourselves we are being watched by some of our listeners, some of our past guests, who we are going to pick on today. So it's not just going to be a, a Jason and I show today. Um, Jason does uh, have a few questions, I think, from you guys. Uh, you are free to ask us anything you like about the podcast, about business in general, uh, about why Plymouth Argyle are the greatest football team in the world. Um, although that's kind of indisputable, so we can't we can't really do that. But um, we also have, I believe, on the show, I'm hoping, there's a guy called Lee in the room here, and I'm hoping that is Lee, our sound engineer. Are you there, Lee? It is indeed. Hello. Oh, fantastic. I'm so glad it is you, and I've not just pulled a random Lee into the group. Um, good afternoon, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks. You're good. I'm uh, good. I, I wanted to pull you in because you've been subjected to all 100 episodes of the podcast, haven't you? I have indeed. I have indeed. Yeah. I recognise a lot of faces, which is nice. You know, I've heard a lot of your stories, which is which is good. I had to edit out the bits that we didn't want in. There's been quite a bit, quite a bit of editing, but not as much as those early episodes. Do you remember when we used to record on a potato in my kitchen? I do remember those painful times that we had. They were, yeah. You need a little bit of guidance to get the sound up to up to par. Oh, dear. If, but by the way, it's just come pre- a long way. Everything's come a long way. It's no, it it's has great. It's been great. It to has. It's almost um, almost constant, never ending improvement. Marginal gains, one percent better each episode. Um, That's the way to do it. So we're here. I think if anyone, yeah, if anyone wants to listen to the first probably six, seven episodes um, before we had Lee's stellar advice of. Try turning the microphone on 
Um, try having more than one microphone. Try not being in the most, how, I don't know how would you, you would describe this, Lee, but I would say the most bouncy, hard, solid surface room in the house. Um, I remember you drawing a little diagram for us about where to sit with <laughs> microphone. Um, I did. We just did the complete opposite for those first. We just put the microphone next to the fan on the laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and anything just, that you could have done wrong was yeah yeah that's how you were doing it yeah. yeah exactly which is pretty much our business career to be honest as well <laughs> um do you have i mean i say you've been subjected to all all hundreds of episodes do you have any favorites oh i just what i enjoy is that you know the dynamic between you and jason and no matter who you're talking to you know you always find a good way to connect with people and to get the most out of them and that's what I enjoy about the podcasts. You know, that that's the good thing for me. I don't I wouldn't say that I've had a favorite. Um, because they're all so different and everyone's so different and they have their own story to tell, you know. So that's yeah. I'll tell you what's weird for me is that having edited so many to actually be sat here talking to you live <laughs> and being a part of it is a little bit surreal, to be honest. Yeah, it is because you've got to edit this back in now as well. Well, that's the good thing. If I mess up, I know that I'm safe. I can edit it out. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and again, we we know lots about what goes on behind the scenes as well. And kind of regular listeners may not appreciate, for example, the, the subtle, subtle things that you do for this podcast. Um, for example, uh, Tom Edwards, uh, our episode from a few months ago, um, talked about the barking dogs on TV programs. And apparently this is a thing within um, post-production sound that if you hear this soundtrack of barking dogs at the start of a television program, it's a little note from the engineer saying, this program is shit. Do not listen to it. It's not worth your time. So Lee managed to put that soundtrack into <laughs> our podcast. <laughs> Without Every telling you. Every single one. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just that one. <laughs> Yeah, I just snuck it in there as a little little bit of humour. Yeah, little little Easter egg just for just for the fun. And I think a lot of what we do on this podcast is just for fun. We do things because hey, that would be cool to do. So I think we've we've asked you before to just randomly put stuff in, light bulbs going off above people's head and jingle bells during Christmas episodes and all sorts. Why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us, Lee. I really, really appreciate that because I think it's it's very important to know what goes on behind the scenes of the podcast. No worries at all. I look forward to the next one and the next and the next. And the next and the next. Cool. Uh, Jace, do we have any questions? Um, have you got, got a couple of questions? I was just going to take us right back to the very first episode, though. Do you remember what we talked about? Uh, be careful who you listen to. <laughs> You've done some research. You won't no, I know that. That was my rant about the day. <laughs> one of my rants about the Daily Mouse. Daily rants about the Daily Mail. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so first off question then is, um, well, actually, is it, I've got another question for you. Uh, maybe not. Let's just introduce him as the episode <laughs> title that he had. So episode number 53, Herbie Goes Bananas. No, it wasn't. It was John's first business mentor and coach was the name of the title, Mr. Clark Duncan. Oh, so my question is, right, these guys almost gave up the podcast at the beginning, right? Um, but obviously stuck with it, right? And you're not just doing it because um, you like to talk to each other, or maybe you do, I don't know. But what's the business return on investment in podcasting for you guys over the last six years? Like, is it, I'm not sure, I mean, you like to measure stuff. I'm not sure if you have measured it, but yeah. do you have a rough idea what? It, it is very it's difficult to measure. Um, because and we talked before about a long lead time. So people discover us long before they come into the One Percent Club or there's any sign of any return on investment. Um, what we do, though, is obviously any sales that come in, we ask people, well, where did you hear about us? And we often just talk to people and say, well, what, what journey have you been on? And actually, Clark, your episode was the first time because you were very early in our kind of pivot. So I think it was episode 43 or something was our last. 43, Herbie. Uh, no, 43 was the, our last one of the Big Idea podcast, but it was just um, me and you. And we just, we decided to bring in guests and we decided to bring in one centers, chat to you guys about your business. And when we did our little 1% Club intakes, and we always say to people, you know, where did you hear about us? 
what journey have you been on? And I would hear the same thing every time I read Big Ideas. I read this book. Occasionally, we'd get someone saying, oh, I listened to the podcast. But Clark, your episode was the first time that I saw somebody reference, oh, I was listening to an episode with Clark Duncan and he said X about the coaching calls and that sounded like right up my street. That's return on investment right there because it's that specific, somebody listening to an unsolicited, uh, unpaid, we don't pay any of our guests to come on this podcast, um, endorsement for what we do in their own words is much more powerful than any of the marketing we could actually throw out there. So it's it's a long burner. And I say that episode we put out with you, Clark, was probably what, five years ago now? Probably four well, and five years. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that comment I had would have been probably a year after the episode came out. Um, and even now, you know, I people discover the podcast. Um, I've went back through the stats to put together some information for this this episode. And episode one is one of our most listened to. Now, I'm in, thoroughly embarrassed by episode one because it just is awful. Uh, we are rabbits in the headlights. Uh, as I say, recorded on a potato. It just it sounds awful. It looks awful. But if you can get past that, then you know it, it gets a bit better. And actually, I think I wrote in Evergreen Assets about if you're going to do podcasting, you've either got to be Basil Fawlty and you've got to do just 12 episodes, John Cleese, all right? Just listen to this advice here. Just 12 episodes of Fawlty Towers. Don't try and come back and do it again after 50 years because that isn't going to work, all right? Got that up there. So you either do Fawlty Towers and you make 12 or just a handful of perfect episodes, really, really highly polished, edited to within an inch of their lives that you are infinitely proud of, or you be Terry Wogan and you just turn up every day, every week or whatever. You just turn up regularly, routinely, and you just keep on churning up those episodes because what you do is you build that relationship episode by episode. So many of you guys, I'm sure, will have not listen to one episode you will have listened to a few you'll probably you might have skipped a few you might i don't like the sound of that guess i don't fancy that one but then three months later you pick up another one and it is that deposit into the goodwill bank i think that comes with podcasting um i think a lot of people start podcasts thinking it's going to be easy road to riches hey let's you know they go on some course where some podcaster says oh i get a million downloads a month and it's really easy and i've built my seven figure business off of this and you can too for just 1997 today first 50 people run to the back of the room all that bollocks that's not what real podcasting is about most podcasts get bugger all downloads and they get to the point that jason and i got to after eight or 10 episodes where you just go, yeah, this is really hard and we're not getting the traction we want. I think you also got to remember we started when podcasting wasn't mainstream. So we were also trying to bring people into the podcasting world. We went out networking locally and we explained, hey, we're podcasters. And I know there are a few people from Plymouth on this call, but I'm sorry, We went networking in Plymouth and explained we were podcasters. We were met with, what's a podcast? Oh, what be that then? Is that like that radio show? Sorry, I went really, really jana then. Apologies to any (laughs) non-Plymouthians around there. Does that that help, Clark? Yeah, no, I mean, like for myself, um, I sort of joined you when you were doing more of the video stuff, uploading it to Mm. YouTube. That's how I consumed the stuff back then because I really didn't do podcasts at all but I do video watching with people talking which turns out to be a podcast <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um the early days for me as well on the podcast like listening to every other people's story inside the one percent club as well was very mm. interesting because then you got to really understand what on earth people were doing so that was a big thing I can understand why people would come in I passed my podcast about to people I knew just to say, hey, come listen to me. I'm not actually a total twat. <laughs> you listen to something. <laughs> That's the title we should have gone with, I think. 
Uh, Lee's still here. Lee, can we make an edit or two there? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, whilst we're talking podcasting, I guess, Leonor's uh, put a, a question in there about... Um, do you want to t- say it, Leonor, or shall I just carry on? Hello. Um, all right. So, yeah, I wanted to know, so how much of an investment would it be to just for somebody who just wants to start podcasting. So I'm looking for a mid of the range equipment thing. So mm-hmm. not necessarily uh, quick and dirty, but also not necessarily Rockefeller rich. And I think I'm aging myself when I mention Rockefeller, should I say Kardashian rich or something? <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so, so something, something that's a, a bit, you know, manageable financially, but uh, that won't make you sound like you're just starting and, and, well, you'll do that yourself, won't you, if you really don't know what you're doing. But but yeah, tech-wise, tech, uh, tech wise, what do you need and how much would that cost? That's my question. Yeah. I, I don't think you need much at all. Um, we, at some point, again, Lee will chastise me for this somewhere buried under here is all the equipment that Lee told us we needed. Um, mixing desk and professional microphones and all that. All that well, that's when you Sorry, Lee, I can't hear you. Them out. You've, right. you've broken up. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the problem with that was that there was too many buttons and John forgot to press the right ones every time we used it. So actually, we realised that six six episodes in and we forgot to keep pushing the button to turn it on. <laughs> so uh, it's like, ah, oh, we'll put that in the box. I can't remember which episode it was. I think it might have been Ben Knight's. It was one of the ones we recorded in our kitchen. And in order to do a sound check, we plugged everything into the laptop. But in order to hear back what was being recorded, we had to unplug the mixing desk so we unplugged the mixing desk had a listen yep that sounds perfect we then went on recorded our episode we were about 20 minutes into the episode and i just caught jason's eye and went and then just waved this lead that was no longer plugged in the mixing desk was just sat on the table not plugged in not recorded so we ended up with another dodgy sounding episode um but in terms of tech, Leona, I, I, we, I mean, I'm using a 99 quid um, Yeti Blue microphone, which you can get from Amazon. We've started with uh, the Snowballs. I think, JC, you're still using a Snowball, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> um, that's, that's, what that's what it is. I was just looking. <laughs> you're just, just checking, yeah. But I mean, those are what? I think they're about 50, 60 quid. Um, they are more than good enough. And certainly enough to get you started. Um, we all often talk about the minimum effective dose. So, you know, don't let, oh, I need to have all the gear stop you from getting started. Um, if if we can reach 100 episodes as a result of a really, really crap setup that sounded awful, then... There's no reason anyone can. I mean, to be fair, you could just get your phone out and record into a phone. I know of podcasters who do that. I even know quite successful podcasters who do that. And that's their thing. For others, it's all highly polished and highly edited and you know, background music and all sorts of that. But for me, 50, 100 quid maximum is all you need to spend. But that's just a microphone, so you, you'll also need editing equipment, I suppose. Even if it's oh, well, you could have a Lee. <laughs> if you well, know a Lee, that's that's helpful. <laughs> unless I'm willing to kidnap him, because I certainly couldn't afford him, that wouldn't be an option for me. For example, yeah. I mean, the, that, again, that there are Rockefeller rich for me right now. Yeah, yeah, there there are free bits of software out right there, um, and there is low cost. I think GarageBand is the most popular that I've seen in terms of editing. Um, but again, what's your thing? You could, yeah. You know, what's stopping you from getting out there and getting it launched? What could be your minimum viable product that you could say? There's a reason we are very, very minimal on our editing. Again, when we went and we hit that, this is difficult stage. What got us going was, okay, how do we make this easy? Right, we do it so that there's very few edits. We talk to people. We have a conversation. Um, there's and Leo sort of um, um, confirm this that anytime we do have a guest who says something they shouldn't do, or I have a coughing fit or something else, I end up waving this piece of orange paper at the screen because Lee can then scan through it and know there's an edit there. But we try our absolute hardest 
to just do it in one take because that's our thing. And this is what podcasting is. Podcasting, to me, if you're not being Faulty Towers, then you are Terry Wogan. And Terry Wogan used to have the number one radio show in the UK when he would just collapse in fits of laughter on air. He would forget what he was saying. He would mispronounce um, guests' names. There was one time that the smoke alarms went off at the gym next door. It was rough. It was ready. And that was his brand. It wasn't highly polished. It was rough and ready. It was your best friend having a, putting on some entertainment for you. And that is what, that's certainly what I listen to podcasts for. I listen to podcasts to befriend the hosts, not because oh they they've edited that really really well and they've they've made it a nice tight eighteen minutes of highly polished podcasts. I do listen to some like that, but that's not why I listen. I listen because they've built up that nurturing over time. Yeah, all right, understood. Well, thank sure. you. You can always you can always add tech you can always add more expense later but for now just get six episodes out there let people tell you it's shit and you can say yeah i know it's shit it's deliberately shit <laughs> i'd be tearing my hair out with that suggestion but i, I it's not long enough for me to try <laughs> uh, but yeah i'll think about it but thank you cool thank you just remember, it's about becoming, being authentic, isn't it? It's about being you. John and I do ours. We are who we are. And actually, you guys watch them. If you do, <laughs> you watch them. But then you come into our world. You find out what we're about. You, you know what we're, you know, when you come into the One Percent Club, you come into, you know, Ambitious Lifestyle Business, wherever it is that you pick up with John and I, you know who we are because this is us. We're not been polished. We haven't been airbrushed. We've not been, well, some of us have been edited out a little bit, haven't we, Lee? But, um, but, but generally speaking, it's, it's authentic, and that's what it's all about. So be authentic, know, like, and trust, and, and get them into your world. Okay, so uh, next uh, question. Actually, no, it's a question from me, because I know you've mentioned. So episode, no, actually, John, what episode number <laughs> was, I couldn't work eight hours if I tried, and then everybody else can guess whose episode that was. Oh, God, right, so that's... That's about a year and a bit ago. So I'm going to say 85. Oh, go with your gut instinct. <laughs> 86. Oh. <laughs> so who whose episode was, I couldn't work eight hours if I tried, and I'm going to ask Alistair. Would that be me? It would, it would. So there's a few of our episodes which have been kind of defining in terms of lots of people making comments about the content of it. And one of his uh, lines in, in his podcast was, I get up in the morning and I get all my work done before the end of GMTV or whatever it's called these days. And 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 you certainly, Sarah, is one person who's gone, I just want to be more Mike Lieberman. <laughs> I, want to, I want to do that. So, uh, yeah, tell, tell me what you, you what you enjoyed about it, I guess. Well, myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that, uh, well, I, I actually started listening to the podcasts after joining the One Percent Club. So one of the things I enjoy the most about them is getting to know the other One Percenters. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, a lot of them have got great stories and I've had uh, different journeys. We've all, we've all got different journeys to get where we are. But Michael Lieberman especially, uh, I, I was amazed by his SEO as well. He's got a really, really good ranking SEO, and it's just from his routine of constantly every day doing his little bits, his little bits that I've just plugged away, and his SEO ranks very well. But he, again, has finished his work by morning time, and the day is his. I'm sure he does plenty of other work, but his daily routine every day is finished uh, by breakfast time, and I just it was amazing, to be honest. And I'm trying to... Uh, to, to, to copy him to a certain respect and uh, I, I do mention him quite a lot he's a one percent hero of mine <laughs> so uh, that, that's that's the main main thing that stuck out is just couldn't believe he'd finished and uh finished by breakfast time yeah, he does start at 11 o'clock in the evening and just works so no he doesn't <laughs> uh, that, he's, that was... he's on plus one <laughs> yeah yeah it was a really interesting episode, that that one with Michael, because I think we, we kind of pulled that, and it was almost that one line out of the entire episode, and we just kind of pulled that out and said, oh, that's interesting. 
And it was only, I think, probably two months, three months later when I started promoting that episode. And suddenly I had emails coming in. I had one guy say, can you please introduce me to Michael? I need to speak to this guy. And it's like, yeah, sure. And then all of a sudden, I'm, again, Alistair, you, you're saying, oh, it's my favorite episode. And it it's one of the ones I've highlighted here that just keeps getting mentioned. Um, it's it's very much a mindset thing. And as you said, you know, his routine of just every day doing the stuff that matters. And I think that's what Michael's done very, very well is 80 20 everything and just said, well, I'm not going to bother doing the 80% only brings in 20% of the work. I'm just going to double down on the 20% that brings in 80% of the revenue, get myself done in time for Good Morning Britain or whatever it is, and then just actually get on with having a life for the rest of the day. And it is that it's the whole ethos of the ambitious lifestyle business, isn't it? It's work second, lifestyle first. Very good, very good. So on to another, um, another one, which actually, again, kind of a little bit inspirational in terms of that story. And I've heard a few, again, one presenters kind of comment about that and, and some comments and stuff from it was the nine year overnight success. What episode was that, John? I, I'm just, by the way, I'm just picking myself because I'd written down Michael Liebman and I've got the bloody number next to it. It was 86. Can I change my answer? 86 <laughs> <Yeah>. Michael Liebman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so nine year over success, overnight success. No, that was that was about a year earlier than Michael Lieberman. Similar time of year, I want to say. So maybe January, February time. I'm going to say seventy four. Good guess, John. Well done. Is, is that yeah, right? Good, you? That's great. Ah, uh, hands off it, or someone who tell me who whose episode that was. See if we've got any fanboys in the in the room. Nine year overnight success. Lee, do you remember? Don't know the number. No, no. Episode 74. Who was in it? He's Googling it now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody is. I mean, the one thing we know is so... he comes up with the right answer. I know. <laughs> Go on, John. You can break it. I know. Yeah, I think he's Mickey knows. Ah. Yeah, I know. James. Yeah, James Marks, that's right. Or Skids, as he's known. <laughs> Skids, as he's known, that's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was, a, again, another interesting episode, wasn't it? Because he just figured out so many different things and to, um, you know, go into romance, novels, and climbing up and down ladders for a living, uh, and having a cleaning business. And again, is another one that people have commented to to me as well and said, oh, I need to speak to this guy. Um, Chris, one of our one centers, within about three months of joining, said, James Marks is my hero. He said, here's the guy I'm modeling my business of. I've just bought a window cleaning round because I listened to the James Marks podcast. And this is what I love because we've always said, like our podcast is not going to be a another podcast where we have the usual guests on that are just doing the rounds, promoting their latest book. We have people who have never been on a podcast before. We have real business owners and it is these people who are inspirational. It's not the guy who's, you know, exited his business for 10 million and created a SaaS. Oh, I mean, we get pitched probably twice, three times a week for different, really, really successful, you know, Uber, um, sort of multiple entrepreneurs. And yeah, it doesn't interest us. Let us chat to the normal guy about what they did to sort out their business, to maximize their lifestyle and for what that means to them. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, for me, uh, James in that particular episode highlighted the multiple streams of income. He's he's kind of probably the one in the group that's got the most streams of income coming in, apart from maybe Clark, who's got his hands in every pie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> most pies, I'll put an exclamation mark there. Um, yeah, so the, uh, but yeah, multiple streams of income. But the thing he's done with each one is systemized it, 
and got himself out of it as quick as he possibly could, apart from going up and down ladders, fighting fires. He really enjoys that. So that's the bit he does all the time. But the other business is he's, he systemized process, put the team in right, right team in place and then got out of it and it runs itself and it does, and it does really well. And that's, that for me is a, is a, is a good place to be. And I know, uh, I know, uh, John, sometime in the summer, you, you've got a, a book about that kind of stuff, haven't you? Um, getting yourself out of the business. Uh, the D.I. Lamerton's uh, false exit or something, wasn't it? Have, hang on, I've been I've been demoted. It was D.C.I. Lamerton. Thank you. Yes, mate, but you were very naughty, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been caught yet. <laughs> yeah, the false exit is coming out uh, this summer. So it's with beta readers at the moment. Um, yeah, how to exit your business. Uh, and still own the bloody thing. That's that was my original subtitle. I quite like and still own the bloody thing. But you know. <laughs> he's he's down to earth. He's gritty. Is DCI Lamerton? <laughs> Di <laughs> Lamerton. <laughs> <laughs> Acting DCI there. Uh, okay, fair enough. I'll let you have that one. So this next this next uh, title could have been a number of people in the group actually. Um, I just want to play golf and have holidays without worrying about money. That could have, that that could pretty much be a lot of people in the group, couldn't it? <laughs> it could. Oh, so this is fairly recent. This is last year. So we're at hundred now. I'm going to say ninety-one. So ninety-one. Okay. Oh, is that right? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> you got me all excited then. It was 91, mate. Yes, of course it was. <laughs> You're too good at this. So apart from Vicky, anybody else got an idea who that might be? Sarah's put something in the group there. Sarah, do you want to let everybody know your guess? You have to unmute yourself a little bit, my lovely. She's only been using Zoom for three years. <laughs> I pressed the space bar. I thought it was, it was done. Anyway, I thought it was Ian Bluck. Ah, so is Asta as well. Okay, yeah, cool. Anybody else? Thank you. Ah, it's, it's a good answer, but it's not right. <laughs> we I, can't went do, we walk I can't do Walker. No, I can't do him. So who else? Who else? Got Jim Wright. Is it Nathan? Say again. Is it Nathan? It was Nathan, yes. There you go. Well, remember, Mr. Nathan Counter, that's correct. Yeah, that was yeah. his uh, his thing. But uh, Michelle, she'd love to do more golf and uh, and, <laughs> and and just, well, that's just it, really. Golf and holidays. That's That could have been Michelle as well, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Anything you want to say about that episode, John? Uh, only that it was an absolute nightmare with Nathan's internet connection. This was like going back to the old days on the potato. But uh... <laughs> it was worse than that. I was in France and I had no signal either. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nathan's in, in the internet and my internet. It yeah. was just uh, yeah, very uh, transient. Episode. Yeah, we started off. And I think we turned videos off, and it was oh, it was yeah, it really didn't work well, did it? No, no, yeah. No, no. But no, it's interesting. We we like I say it could very well have been. Um, Ian Bluck's episode as well with the references to golf because lifestyle first, you know, which one, <laughs> you know, which, which uh, matters first and foremost is lifestyle, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so talking about a lifestyle um, or maybe not as the case may be, uh, I hid under a table during a military coup. Did you know? Yes, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> quite oh, recent okay. isn't it that, that is a recent one yeah that's oh like 95 oh, close 96 even worse <laughs> 94 <laughs> You're very, bang on John how'd you get there <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you know we should have done like um, play your cards right on this we should have just given me the person's name and then gone higher or lower <laughs> you know, maybe we'll do that next you never know <laughs> <laughs> for our next hundred episodes yeah 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 <laughs> Who, whose episode was that then anybody got an idea it was fairly recent so those who've just joined james good afternoon my space bar isn't working either i've caught it off sarah it was <laughs> caroline gertler it was Caroline. That's right. Yeah, it's, it, it was something. In fact, it, of all of our podcasts that we've done and the stories that we've heard, I think Caroline's was the most uh, uh, revealing, I guess, in terms of all these things that we never expected to kind of come out. And yeah. a military coup, hiding around, under a table and that kind of stuff. It um, it, it kind of really was a, a life story, wasn't it? It was mm. it was really good. Um, yeah, kind of like just just 
just blew my mind really that that the whole the story that she got and she went through but uh, yeah and then ending up with hot water bottle covers and uh, and now dying stuff it just kind of like didn't it just it was just yeah wasn't expecting it no it, it was and again we got to know caroline over the past couple of years and we wouldn't have had a clue that there was this backstory because she's just this lovely you know middle-class lady from the home counties and it's like, oh fantastic yes um only to find that yeah she took a one-year-old to cambodia and hid under a table and it's i think for me it was that what i took from that episode was her mindset around well having lived through that all this business malarkey that's a walk in the park because there is nothing that can attack me or hurt me anywhere remotely close to that i'm never going to feel as scared as i was then so i survived that i can survive anything um <laughs> i was just asking the group if you had a, a favorite episode uh, roger's come up with number 99 which is our last episode why is that roger what did you like about that episode uh, it's a fantastic story all was about, it? yeah it was it was it was great well edited just just bang on just everything uh, what, what do you remember? What, what about the story made you most inspired? Um, it was the, the guy you were interviewing. He's a very, very inspiring person. Uh, okay, okay. What was it? What, what other story did you like? Um, being shot at, I think. Being shot at. <laughs> <Can I say laughs> that? <laughs> that was my favorite part as well. <laughs> yeah. Roger, who was the star of the of the number ninety nine? Um, I think it was me. Ah, it was you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, being shot at, thats uh, that was definitely something to, uh, if you haven't listened to the uh, number 99 with Roger, that is definitely one to listen to, because again, you, you have a story as well. And I can't wait to hear from Leonor later, after this podcast recording, about her story, because that, that sounds pretty exciting too. <laughs> but I'm going to leave that on there, because at some point, Leonor will join us on the podcast and uh, you will uh, you will all get to hear about how she uh, dot dot dot. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited. I was brought into the story. Like, yeah, come on. I want to hear the story. <laughs> Vicky, do you have a favourite episode? Because you have to listen to them all and you have to kind of go through them, find all those edits. You have to uh, be, be <laughs> just absorb everything that goes on there. So what, what's, have you got any favourite episodes? Mm, not one in particular um sarah's sarah's really resonated with me with the whole education system um and being a mum steve west kind of navigating through various different issues really putting the work in taking advice from members and then seeing the results of that continuously um roger's yours was pretty good i'll give you that <laughs> um <laughs> Michelle's Michelle when she broke her leg um a real turning point I think for Michelle within the business um I don't know there's there's I think what Lee said earlier at the beginning just listening to the stories the background stories because when they when the members come into the club we meet them at a certain point we don't necessarily well we don't we don't know what their past is and how they've found the club um so I always find that interesting and just, yeah, th there's been too many to pick one in particular. Um, look, I mean, the Christmas episodes are good. You and John just gas bag into each other. It, it's always entertaining. Gas bagging. Gas bagging, is that a thing? It used to be tea. No, it wasn't tea, was it? Um, something else, who knows? <laughs> that was back when we had the kitchen table, wasn't it? Anyway, moving on quickly. <laughs> We're doing enough of those behind the scenes. Um, Yes, the Christmas specials, they, they, they always get me every time. Yeah. What book have you read this year, John? I don't know. I'm going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that question that always fills me with dread. What one, what one book have you read this year? I've always read one book. That's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just looking around the room, Hannah, good to see you. How are you doing? Because uh, Hannah was one of our original one percenters um, back the many, you know, blah, blah, many years Kitchen ago. Kitchen table and everything. That was so yes, kitchen table time. That was it exactly. Um, how are you? And what brought you back onto our podcast today? Um, hello, it's it's nice to see you guys. Um, it's really weird. I feel like I've 
like this is nothing new because between listening to the podcast and I've been listening to routine machines on repeat kind of recently um so I feel like I've hung out with John a lot lately um <laughs> even though I haven't but I suppose that's the benefit of um audio podcasts or, or audiobooks um but yeah I came because I got an email and I just sort of wanted to hear from you guys I always feel so inspired and there's those little things over the years like so what are we talking five years probably it was when I was um really doing well with my business and then I didn't have things in place and procedures um and didn't really protect myself from various things that happened I then had a bit of a wobble with life um probably the best way to put it um and had to sort of stop everything and now coming back to things um and actually business is going quite well which is why I've been enjoying re-listening to things and getting back into kind of really challenging myself um yeah that that's why I'm here kind of and I need some of that dynamic duo encouragement to take over the world Fantastic, fantastic. And you find that in our podcast. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> amazing. You don't need to sound so surprised. And you're finding that in our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Amazing to see you. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us on this special 100 edition live thing that we're going to put out recorded. It'd be amazing. <laughs> So looking at uh, another episode we had um, back 38, episode 38. Hot cross buns, sweaty assets, and who? Assets. And assets. who? Yes. Who asses it? Yeah, that's right. I, guess I can't read well. Okay, it's a good job. I, you didn't put the book out. Is it Evergreen Assets? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should have been a blue one, but never mind. Mm. Who was the person we spoke about then? Because, uh, yeah. Oh, that was Gerald Ratner. It was Mr. Gerald Ratner, exactly. Yes. Uh, later to come into one of our 1% group. And have it was, was, again, very inspirational there. So obviously we, he wasn't a guest on the podcast, but we did reference him. I think this was his book, uh, The Rise, Fall and Rise Again of Gerald Ratner. Um, fantastic story about someone who was literally on top of the world. You know, UK's first billion pound high street store, um, lunch with the prime minister, earning 850k a year, absolutely on the crest of a wave, makes one speech, loses everything. And for me, the the story was how he built that back again afterwards. But also, I think having chatted with him on the on the 1% Club coaching call, oh my God, again, it was one line, wasn't it? He just threw it away at the end of the call. He went, well, I better go now because my son's in town and we're going out for a curry. Wouldn't have been able to do that if I was still running Ratners. And it was like, right, if that, you know, what does an ambitious lifestyle business look like for you? That was Gerald Ratner's ALB as well. Going for a curry with my son, because I can. Going for a bike ride, listening to my favourite music, having really good coffee. And it's like, here's a guy who was a multi, multi-millionaire. On top of the world, Sunday Times, Rich List, you know, probably in line for a peerhood. no. All he wanted was good coffee, ride his bike, listen to his favourite bands and go for a curry with his son. That is what life is about. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and thinking that um, it wouldn't be coming coming towards the end of the call, uh, end of the podcast really recording, isn't it? So um, just thinking we couldn't go anywhere without mentioning flamingos, could we? No, we haven't. I, I keep saying we need a glossary for this podcast. So we've got flamingos, we've got pumpkins, we've got hedgehogs, flywheels. Um, uh, what else have we referenced that just makes no sense if you don't listen to this podcast? If you listen to one episode of this podcast, you couldn't make sense of what the hell we're talking about. You need to listen again and again. You do. So thinking flamingos, we have our flamingo winner in the room. It was one of our guests of our podcast, but um, showing off her trophy in the back, on her background is Michelle. <laughs> and I know she's got a question for, for us. Have I got a question? I don't know. <laughs> what happened to the pink flamingo this year? Because she's getting a little bit deflated. I was going to say, it looks like it needs a little bit of air in it there. <laughs> she was supposed to be coming physically with me, but I had to take a photo. <laughs> <laughs> 
So for, for those who don't know, the Pink Flamingo Award is awarded every year to the one presenter who spends the most complete amount of days not working in their business. And Michelle just blew everybody away last year from the very, I think, January, you started off with something like 29 days out of the office, didn't you? <laughs> not, not far off. Yeah, it was, it was um, but the thing is, I noticed what I noticed is other people started talking about having more holidays as well. Yeah. That was what inspired me to think, oh, I've got to book another one now, because that's why it's going to get beaten. <laughs> <laughs> but it did inspire other people to go, oh, actually, I need to take a week off here, or I need to take a day off. And that was what I noticed as well, that other people were really looking and going, yeah, actually, time out is really important. I mean, in the end, I think I took off about six months last year, so. I'm very grateful to you both. Yeah, but we're very grateful to you, Michelle, as well, because you said, you know, inspired. And what have we heard so far today on this podcast that the most inspirational stories are, I'm finished work in time for Good Morning Britain, and I hardly ever work because I'm on holiday all the time. (laughs) You know, it's the old, what does an ambitious lifestyle business look like for you? It's being able to do those things. It's it's not neglecting the business, but it's sculpting and creating that business so that you can play more golf, you can enjoy holidays, you can earn yourself a pink flamingo, you can sit there and watch. Is it still Piers Morgan that does it? I don't even know. But whatever you want to do, how you want to sculpt your days, your weeks, your months, or your year, you have the control to do that. You have the power. And it's stories like yours, Michelle. And it's stories like Michael's and indeed every one of the hundred episodes we've had so far. It's these stories of, as I said, the the real people, the real business owners, not the bloody shiny gurus that every other podcast gets. We have real business owners with real stories that is truly inspirational. So thank you. Thank you all. And that is our 100th episode of the Ambitious Lifestyle Business Podcast in the bag. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, uh, It's been amazing. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. And here's to the next 10 episodes. (laughs) I was going to say 100, but, you know, I'm not committing to that many. Here's to at least another 10. We'll do 10 more at least, shall we? 10? That maybe gets us to another Christmas special. (laughs) That's all right. That's all right. You'll have another book then. False Exit's coming out. Oh, is it? I've got to read that, have I? Okay, fair enough. You're not going to read it to me. (laughs) (laughs) Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining us. on. Thank uh, you, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. So there we are. Another episode in the can. Um, How was it for you? Please let us know. um, How do you listen to these podcasts? Um, Please leave a review on that platform. Let us know what we can do better, what you like, what you don't like, and how we can improve to make this show even better for you. We'll see you next time.